I was born American in the middle of nowhere in France. It was a geographical accident. Okay. Welcome to Florent, the man, and Florent, the diner, though for 23 years they've pretty much been one and the same. Florent is in its final days, the diner that is, the victim of rising rents. The spate of publicity about the restaurant that presaged the change in the meatpacking district has turned Florent, the man, into a New York Tom Sawyer or Huck Finn, present at his own funeral. It's like having a chance to, like, to read your obituary. Yeah. You know, it's done. Um, I can die in peace. <laughs> Long before the meatpacking district buzzed with new restaurants, shops, and hotels, there was Florent, a 24-hour diner among the meatpackers, prostitutes, drug dealers, and partygoers who frequented the neighborhood. It became much more than a place to eat. A community center, non, a non-stop 24 hours, 23 years long, um, home of politics, of things happening, of culture, of insanity. No need to look at the board for the day's specials. The board is for the headline of the day, the forecast, comings and goings, and at the bottom, a series of numbers, various T-cell counts for the HIV positive Florent. The higher, the healthier. A number must have fallen here. <laughs> Sometimes it happens and people come to me and say, Florent, I, I saw 59. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 the number drop. Yeah. <laughs> gravity, it's only gravity. The last days of Florent have brought back a flood of memories, like dressing up as Marie Antoinette on Bastille Day, co-marshal of the Gay Pride Parade with Christine Quinn, and Cindy Lauper serving as tour guide through New Jersey on a bus headed to an anti-war protest in Washington. But not all of the memories have been so sweet, especially the late 80s. We had to leave the restaurant late at night in group of three because otherwise we were attacked, you know, and seriously attacked. Uh, people, you know, a lot of people stopped coming to the restaurant because they were scared. And there are even more painful memories. The restaurant was born in 1985 as the AIDS crisis was raging. Florent was diagnosed as HIV positive in 1987. His partner died in 1994. So there's a picture with, I'm the only one in the picture and everybody's dead and you just go, you cry. I was very lucky because in my family, uh, dying was part of the conversation. That's why, you know, I, I, got, I had a leg up on all my other friends when people started dying in the mid 80s. Um, my grandmother died in my arms when I was 24. And it was a beautiful experience. Perhaps it's that experience that has given Florent some perspective on the end of a restaurant. The loss of, of restaurant Florent is, for so many people, the end of an era. Well, I can't have my shoulders. <laughs> the whole, a whole era. We've been on, on, the, on a fun, eccentric cutting edge. It's exhausting. <laughs> Florent Morellet has been credited with putting the meatpacking district on the map. Appropriate, because ever since he was a kid, maps have been his passion. These are just maps for when I want to say, oh, you know. Find you, a place. Find a place, yeah, yes. Right. <laughs> but it goes beyond that. Long before his life in restaurants, Florent considered a career in urban planning, and he loves to create maps of imaginary places using existing cities. You have a bit of a takeoff on Washington here. Here you have a bit of a takeoff on London. It's a relief from our own mortality, uh, the end of ourselves, to see that we are like, uh, you know, a little bit like coral reefs. You know, we, the coral reefs keep spewing, the, each plant dies, but it, it, there is something left uh, that is somewhat immortal. It's our cities. He grew up in a small town in the west of France, his father a famous artist. The family traveled, and Florent saw the world. I have checked three times across the country. I've checked from New York to Mexico City. I mean, I have had to jump out of trucks because people were drunk driving their trucks. I, I have checked across the Middle East. I'm a tough queen, <laughs> trust me. After living in London, San Francisco, and Paris, where a restaurant he opened flopped, Florent came to New York in 1978. On his second night here, he met some men in the meatpacking district. He thought they were picking him up. 
Instead, he was mugged. It's not like you're mugged because you were doing your shopping or something like that. No, I was mugged because I was, you know, a sex addict going, doing something crazy. After working at a restaurant in Soho, he decided to buy a place in the meatpacking district and put his name on it. It caught on, surviving the rough scene outside. Eventually, the meatpacking district cleaned up and became hip, and Florin became a community organizer, helping the neighborhood attain landmark status. People get annoyed at tourism, but this is the new, uh, you know, smokestack industry without smokestack. This is where you have, you know, the, the jobs for, you know, the working class here in New York that we lost. But the restaurant and neighborhood's good fortune didn't always translate into good times for Florent. He's gone to Overeaters Anonymous and Sexual Compulsives Anonymous. After a major depression in 2002, Florent says he checked into rehab in a mental institution. I was not accepting the changes of the neighborhood then and the changes of getting old. That's where uh, the, the, the sexual addiction was very strong, is that I wanted to be desired and I was not being desired anymore. And to me, my life was over. Last year, he started going to Alcoholics Anonymous after an incident at his weekend home in New Jersey. I was gardening at 1 o'clock in the morning, and my garden is on the incline, and I fell on the wheelbarrow and really knocked myself out, really bad. Uh, and I could have, I could have died. Uh, and I call him, you know, GWI, gardening while intoxicated. Florent says he is not interested in opening another restaurant and may write a book about this one. After some initial resistance, he now seems at peace with the decision to close Florent a decision which has helped him analyze not only the diner's history, but his own. Addictions is it's really often an excuse to, to not be present and also away from intimacy. I've come back in my 50s to realize that uh, I want to be more, you know, that, that I have these, you know, obsessive, qualities, I don't know, <laughs> you know, really qualities, you know, that, that I want to have a more sober life and I want to be more in the present. One-on-one -on -one with Florent Marley, Budmishkin, New York One.